I want to talk about, in this segment here, the more of the self-imposed bad things that maybe people don't even realize, and we'll get to this in a second, that they are indeed self-imposed, and instead people just blame God. Well, how could you have let this happen? It's like, well, you did this, actually. <laughs> That's different than an earthquake, right? Like, you didn't cause an earthquake, but you do sin. That's what I want to talk about here. All right, let's go to Romans. Uh, Romans 1, we'll start with 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in all the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. God exists, obviously, look around. For although they knew God, although people knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. We'll come back around to that. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things that are worshiping at the idols. Therefore, therefore, here's the turn. Therefore, God gave them up in their lusts of their hearts, gave them up to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped, the serve, worshiped and served the creator, excuse me, the creature rather than the creator. We talk about that when we talk about environmentalism. That's what environmentalists do. They worship the creation, not the creator. Verse 26, for this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchanged natural relations with those that are contrary to their nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations for women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since, and this generalizes it out a bit more again, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of un. Righteousness starts with Roman 118, ends at 29, right there. Two lines of scripture that are important there that I want to highlight. 28, they did not see fit to acknowledge God. What does that mean? They did not see fit to acknowledge God. Perhaps a more literal translation of that is, they did not approve, or want even, they did not want to have God in their knowledge. They did not want to have God in their knowledge. I, I think that's everything right there. People don't want to have God in their way of thinking, in whatever they do and the way, the way they think and what they think. They don't want to have God there. So what does God do? Well, verse 26, God gave them over to their degrading passions. <laughs> there you go. God gave them to the lusts of their hearts. I think the root of all the evil today is we don't want, we don't feel, we don't fit. We don't, it doesn't, we don't find it fit to acknowledge God. That's the fundamental problem of the world around us and of your life and of my life. This morning, this morning, did you wake up and say, God, it's unbelievable. I can't believe that my heart is still pumping blood throughout my body. All night long, I'm laying here and my heart is still pumping. I didn't do anything. I didn't try. It's not like I'm thinking about it. It's not like I'm like, oh, please keep, keep pumping, keep pumping, keep pumping. It kept pumping, carrying oxygen from my lungs to my cells all over my body. I don't even know how that works. Did you wake up this morning and say, oh, I'm so grateful that the chemical reactions that occur in my bloodstream were still at work today or whatever, right? Thank you, evolution. Thank you, evolution, for the neurons that are in my brain that continue to fire in such a way that I can still think and move my body and my body functions properly in ways that I can't even comprehend or understand. And then I can even have the consciousness to even ask the big questions like, does God exist? And is he good? And why does bad happen? Thank you, evolution. No, we didn't even think those things when you wake up in the morning. You don't even think those things at all. And then even if you did, most people don't even thank God for them. Right? So we don't even acknowledge the things, let alone acknowledging God's role in these good things. We don't see fit to acknowledge God. It's exactly what Paul said in Romans here. We don't want God, we want the self. And that's the first sin. That's the fall in the Garden of Eden, eating the fruit. What was the fruit? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why would someone want that? Why do you want to know the knowledge of good and evil? So then you can determine what you think is right and wrong. Me, not God. 
I determine what's right and wrong. Does that make sense? God says, this is what's right and wrong. And we say, no, I want to determine what is right and wrong. So then we do. We, we determine what we think is right and wrong. And we do wrong. We choose wrong. And God gives us over to it. Gives us over to the degrading passions and lusts of our heart. Just like we want it. There's the old line, right? Why do bad things happen to good people? But the proper question is, as we asked in the first segment, is why do good things happen to bad people? Well, you, re you don't do what God wants you to do. And if you remove God's grace and you never even find it fit to acknowledge him, you're going to get a lot more of those bad things. Clearly, right? So what are the bad things? Well, again, we think of, again, earthquakes and cancer and stuff like that. There's a ton of bad things in the world. Again, the, I'm focusing on the ones that are more in your your like day-to-day -day normal life. And it goes on in Romans and lists them. Greed, envy, and like consider these. Consider these things that exist in our fallen, broken world that are bad and cause more bad things. Greed, envy, strife, deceit, malice, slander, gossip. Arrogance, dishonoring of parents, distrust, lack of mercy, lack of love. That's, that's like most of our existence. That's most of our interaction with people, isn't it? It's just full of that stuff. And what's so fascinating, I think, about the depraved mind is we don't even see how depraved it is. We don't even see it happening, right? When a person or a society is sinking in such moral decay, we don't even see it. That's how defective we are. We don't even see our defectiveness, especially in our postmodern world where you're not even allowed to say if something is good or bad or beautiful or ugly or true or false. There's no such thing as truth. There's no such thing as subjective or objective anything. And then because of that, for so long, we're not, even to we're not able to see bad things when they're happening and we're not able to articulate bad things when they're happening. We're not even allowed to determine what is good or bad. We are, that's how lost we are. We don't even know which way is true north. My son the other day played his first uh, game of pin the tail on the donkey, right? You put the blindfold on, you spin him around, and then he tries to put, right? That's us. It's like we're, we've been spun around so much for so long now. We're so dizzy. We don't even know which way is straight anymore. All right, we got to pause it there. There's a ton to talk about here. There's way more we need to go over, and it's available for our supporters. The first tv.com slash support to watch the rest of this interview. Thank you.